I think Tesla just made a huge mistake. Uh, I think Elon just made a checkmate move. Find out why next on In Depth. Now, do you like to keep your brain sharp? Yeah, I'd like to, but I mean, lately, like a lot of us, I've been feeling like my brain is getting dull. Well, I have a solution for you. Like what? A brain sharpening machine? Well, kind of. We're sponsored by our friends at Brilliant. Brilliant has courses on all kinds of subjects to get your brain sharp again, like cryptocurrency, logic, and computer science. But how is this any different than boring lectures, which I hate, by the way? Yes, I know how much you hate boring lectures, and you're exactly right. Research has shown that problem solving is way more effective than lectures, and that's how Brilliant works. I like Brilliant's courses because they are laid out like a story and broken down into little pieces so that you can tackle them a little bit at a time. Oh, that's cool, because I was just going to say, I usually don't have much time either. So I'm taking a course on probability, statistics, and finance, and I'm really enjoying it. I also feel, well, sharper. Ooh, I'm going to try this one. It's a four-course path on science foundations. Join Jesse and I in a community of 8 million learners and educators today. To support our channel and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash now you know and sign up for free. And also the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual subscription. All right. So as I said at the top of the show, I think Tesla just made a huge bad mistake. I've made a huge mistake. And what I'm talking about here is NAX, which is the North American charging standard or the basically it's the Tesla charger, but they've renamed it. Okay, and wh what's wrong with it? Well, I mean, didn't you hear? Elon's basically opening up the charging standard for free. And he's making it so that non-Teslas, especially over in Europe right now, can charge at Tesla superchargers. And I think that's a huge mistake. We even made an episode about this. Remember, it's called It's the Superchargers Stupid. Uh, we had that whole in-depth, and it talked about that the superchargers are Tesla's moat. And if Tesla opens up that moat and lowers the drawbridge and lets all these other brands use their superchargers then basically Tesla is giving away one of their strongest features. I mean, look, the supercharger network, it's easy. It's fast. There's charging everywhere. So you basically got rid of range anxiety for EVs. And we know what we're talking about because we drive non-Teslas. We drive Rivians and Ford F-150s and Leafs. So we know that, you know, Tesla there's is great. A, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a huge difference between driving a non-Tesla here, especially in the United States, uh, versus driving a Tesla because the charging networks are completely different. But I really don't think that this is the lowering of the drawbridge that you're making it out to be. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, once you let everybody charge at your supercharger network that you spent so much time and money building, you just gave away everything for free. OK, but here's the thing. Tesla has announced the North American charging standard. I just said that. Yes. That is the connector and all of the stuff that goes behind it. So okay. the way that things charge. That does not necessarily mean that they're opening up their superchargers. Okay. But what about Europe? Uh, if we look right here at this map, these are all the superchargers in Europe right now that non-Teslas can charge at. Now, I know it's not all of them, but it's a lot of them. And here's the map of all the superchargers, including the ones that non-Teslas can charge at. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that it is much, much, much denser. Yeah, but I will point out that you can drive pretty much from one end of Europe to the other on the superchargers that they've opened up. I agree. And I think that it is, look, it's a big benefit to non-Tesla drivers in Europe. I think that uh, Tesla is going to be able to turn on quite a bit of revenue from these drivers as these supercharger stations, which are generally not completely packed most of the time, are going to now have more visitors. OK, so that's your answer that they basically gave away everything, but they're making a little bit of money on the electricity. OK, it's a it's a decent enough charging network. These open Tesla superchargers, that's a decent enough looking network. OK. Um, and in places like the Netherlands, Tesla has basically been forced to open all of their superchargers. Right. And Europe has a lot of power when it comes to that sort of thing. And I think the Netherlands um, had probably the most force to bear on Tesla. But look at the rest of Europe. Tesla didn't open all of their superchargers. And okay. so what does that do? What does that do to the Audi e-tron driver who is pulling in at a Tesla supercharger station that they are allowed to charge at? That means that they're going to have to pull out their Tesla app and they're going to have to do a couple of things and give them the credit card information to plug in their Audi e-tron. And what are they going to be doing while they're sitting there waiting for their car to be charged? They're going to watch YouTube on their Audi e-tron no, screen. No, they won't, right? Oh, they will right. see other people in Teslas watching YouTube and Netflix on their screens. And they might even talk to those people and talk about electric car stuff, which is something that happens a lot at electric car charging stations, right? Okay. But, I mean, I don't understand what 
What are you having driving at? a denser network is a huge advantage. And so by Tesla opening up superchargers in Europe, but not all of them, what they're doing is still creating a big incentive for you to buy a Tesla. Oh, wait a minute. I think I see what you're saying. So you're saying they're basically kind of advertising that if you were driving a Tesla, you just passed a whole bunch of superchargers on your way here to get to this and you, one. And you were going, oh, am I going to make it? And you couldn't pull into those because they weren't open to you. Yes. But if they were, if you were in a Tesla, you would have been able to charge all along. So here's my thought here. In Europe, they have adopted the CCS Type 2 plug. In the United States, Tesla has opened up their North American charging standard to say, hey, you know, this uh, this CCS type one plug is enormous. It's really expensive. It's really ugly. And honestly, it breaks all the time. Mm -hmm. So what they've done is they said, uh, we will allow other people to use this. What they didn't say is that they're opening all of their supercharger stations. So you think they might do what they did in Europe, which is to open enough of them so that you could get across the country, but not all of them. And so therefore, if you're driving a Ford F-150, you'd be like, gosh, darn it, I wish I could stop at that supercharger. And that is going to avert two different problems for Tesla. If Tesla were to open all of their superchargers all at once, and, and I mean, obviously, most EVs in America, well, most EVs in America are Teslas, but most non-Tesla EVs in America have CCS or Chademo charging ports. And so they don't have the Tesla plug. They wouldn't be able to plug in immediately. They'd need to go get adapters and stuff like that. Um, but what could happen within a few years, if the North American charging standard was adopted, would be that all of the charging stations would be completely full. We're going to have a lot of different EVs pulling in that can only charge at like 50 or 150 kilowatts. Um, they're yeah, gonna that's going to gum up the whole works. And so that would be a problem. If Tesla doesn't open up all their superchargers and they just open up a select few. Like this, they did in Europe. Like they did in Europe. This would mean that basically some of the superchargers would get gummed up. But many of them, for Tesla owners specifically, would not would never be packed or full. Oh, and this would also let Tesla grab some federal money. Like there's that $7.5 billion with the federal money for charging, and they could grab some of that to build chargers. This points me to that one that we talked about in Tesla Time News recently, the Quartzsite Arizona 88 stall supercharger. We were which wondering is, why they're building it. Which is right next to, right across the street from, a 36 stall supercharger. And we were going, why are they doing that? So now, why are they doing it? I mean, I kind of get it. It's the only basically civilization between L.A. and uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I, I know that there's <laughs> uh, fringes, but then it's right in the middle of the desert. So there's not a lot going on, which means if you want to drive any kind of EV, you are going to need to charge right there. Oh, so you think they built it because this might be one of the first ones they open up to non-Tesla EVs. And so... If you had maybe two supercharger stations, one of them could be open, one of them could be closed just for Teslas, then that 88 stall could be open, have, uh, you know, bolts and e-trons and Jaguar I-Paces or Ford F-150s and Rivians plugged in there charging. And then across the street, you could still have the Tesla one, which could never get fully gummed up with non-Tesla EVs. It's the, it's the only thing that makes sense to me because every single picture that we've seen of this 36 stall supercharger in between Phoenix and L.A. isn't that full. I just don't think you've addressed my point about uh, the moat and opening the drawbridge. I feel like as soon as Tesla does this, they're going to eliminate the whole charging problem that all these other EVs have. And they're going to solve it, which is good for sustainability. I'm all for that. But from a Tesla shareholder point of view... I think I should be mad at Elon. Look, Tesla's mission is to accelerate the advent of electric mobility. And I think that a lot of people take that to mean Tesla's going to do everything in their power to, you know, they're just going to give away everything that they can. I don't think that that's necessarily what they're going to do. But what EVs are running up against right now is a perception problem. Mm -hmm. People, regular, average people who haven't driven an EV, have seen EVs, but don't, don't know which ones they are and don't know anything about charging. What is their experience with an EV? They're going to go, well, Tesla's a little weird. So I'm going to look at the companies that I'm used to. I'm going to look at Chevy. I'm going to look at Ford. I'm going to see what kind, what do they have for options? And so if they're interested at all, they're going to probably be looking at those brands. And those brands sell EVs, but 
when they get reviewed by car reviewers or magazines or stuff like that, the biggest problem is always charging infrastructure. And it's always, I went on a trip and I had nowhere to charge and I pulled into an Electrify America station and all of the chargers were broken. So I think what you're saying then is very nuanced. You're saying that I will go buy that Chevy Equinox EV. <laughs> I will be able to pull in at some Tesla superchargers and charge it. So and I it will, will be able to get to grandma's it'll house. It'll save my butt when the Electrify America station's out. Okay. And then you're saying once I become a EV user and I get used to it, I will then learn the nuances of EV driving and I'll go, my next car should be a Tesla for all these reasons, including the better charging network. Because by having it completely segregated, by having Teslas charge over here and other EVs charge over there, there is less intermingling. And so I've met a lot of people who don't who drive non-Tesla EVs and they just have no concept as to how much Tesla's cost, how the supercharger network works, how easy it is. How easy it is, anything about autopilot. Okay, so I get it. So once we're all pulling into the same places, we see all the different cars, we talk to different people, we learn more is what you're saying. I think that that's one possibility. And I think that And is this what you're talking about about Elon's chess move that like he saw this many moves away? Yes, and we're still a few of those moves away. We still, the North American charging standard is not a standard, right? It's only a standard with, well, the majority of EVs in America, which is Tesla, and it's going to be adopted by Aptera. That's a big move. I know that Aptera is a small company and most people haven't heard of them, but having just another company that's going to adopt it, the next company that adopts it, I hope that there are many. That's going to be the final nail in the coffin You're for right. the CCS You're right. charging standard because then it's going to be like, yeah, we are going to move to the to the sleek, well-made well, time proven design of the Tesla North American charging standard. But what you're saying is it's almost a checkmate move. Whereas if I'm Ford and I do adopt Nax, that seems to help me, but it will eventually kill me. And this is why they might not go for it. And and so this is kind of, this is going to be the battle. Uh, I think that Tesla's advantage <laughs> is that they are so far ahead in terms of production mm -hmm that they are going to have a bigger and bigger lead every year. I mean, I know that people are saying, well, they're starting to lose market share. Starting to lose market share doesn't affect the cumulative thing. Right. If Tesla still has more than 50% market share in the United States, which they do, right. then they are continually selling more and more and more of these EVs. Um, and that means that the proportion of EVs that are Teslas is greater. Now, you bring up a really good point. It's a nuanced point. I think only people watching who drive EVs and actually who've driven both. Yeah, I hate to say that would get it. Um, and that's why I'm a little bit afraid about doing this episode, to be honest, because I know a lot of you down below are going to say, like, I dro drive a Bolt and I don't get what you're saying or mm -hmm. I drive a Tesla and I don't get what you're saying. We do drive both. And so I think that we are in a kind of unique position and not many people out there have driven both. So I would be interested in your comments. Let us know if you think we're completely crazy. Is Tesla making a huge mistake like I initially said and they're opening up the moat? Or has Elon thought many moves ahead and he has basically already won the chess game? We just haven't seen it yet. Because once Tesla has fully cemented itself as the charging ruler of the world, which it, it already has, but the only problem is it hasn't let in the other people. Once they are in and assimilated. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, I mean, there, there's not going to be any other game in town. Right. Electrify America has proven that they don't take care of their charging stations. Yep. I hope that Nax is going to improve the reliability, but I can't prove that. And so I think that Tesla is going to be the de facto charging station of America. Right. And once that happens, I'm sorry to say... Tesla's going, Tesla's going to be able to run the game and they're going to say, well, we are going to close that station off because, you know what, we found that it was too busy right. and uh, we have to look or, after our customers first. Or we're going to charge more money for it or whatever they have to do. Yeah. And this is just another little move um, that we are that nobody really that doesn't really make any sense to us because most analysts are looking quarter to quarter. Yeah. And most analysts don't drive any EVs at all. And if you would do us a favor and hit the like button, it makes a huge difference for this channel. It helps share this video with more people and make sure you're a subscriber. We love new subscribers. We welcome you aboard. And don't forget, if you want to head over to our Patreon for as little as a buck a month, you can watch all of our Patreon bonus stories where we bring you insights that we don't share with just everybody. And that, of course, is every week. We'll see you next time. Now, now you know. know.